Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. It's quite rare to hear of Bigfoot encounters where the creature actually attacks people, but in today's video I have an old tale about just that. This takes place in the late 1800s, and it seems that the small amount of violent Bigfoot reports and Bigfoot attacks come from like the 1800s and also the early 1900s. I'm not sure why this is, but in modern times, you never really hear reports of people getting attacked and actually making physical contact with a Bigfoot creature. Maybe it's because these old tales are just that, like old tales and just stories. But maybe it's because, you know, real genuine modern encounters like this are covered up. Uh, maybe law enforcement covers them up because they're extremely startling in nature. Whatever the case is, these stories are quite unsettling. Uh, today we're talking about a Bigfoot creature known as the Ohio Grassman. Uh, and an attack on a man and his daughter who are traveling the countryside in a carriage or a wagon. Like I said, this happened in the 1800s. I think it was 1869. Uh, to be exact, so, you know, horse and buggy was the way people got around. And this happened uh, near Gallipolis, Ohio. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce that. But, um, you know, if I made a mistake and messed that up, you can let me know down in the comments. The way the story goes is that this father and daughter were traveling, and out of nowhere, a Bigfoot creature came up to the, to the carriage and ripped the man from the carriage and um, threw him to the ground really hard and was basically on top of him trying to bite him and was like scratching him like a like a wild animal would like a bear would or something like that um, and apparently this attack went on for you know quite a while and they were scuffling around in the mud and like the man could barely breathe he was suffocating because this creature was on top of him but there was actually lots of newspapers um, not too long after this attack that actually wrote about it and uh, that's how the story came to be there's a lot of newspaper stories like this from way back in the day if you do some research online um, you can find lots of old newspaper clippings of Bigfoot encounters and attacks in the late 1800s and also in the early 1900s uh, especially in places like British Columbia and into the Pacific Northwest, you do find lots of old newspaper articles of Bigfoot sightings. Uh, you know, to determine which ones are actually true is quite difficult. And at this point, you know, for all, all those old stories, it's pretty much impossible to determine if they are real. Um, but this one, uh, this uh, newspaper uh, report about this attack goes like this. Gallipolis, Ohio, is excited over a wild man who is reported to haunt the woods near that city. He goes naked, is covered with hair, is gigantic in height, and his eyes start from their sockets. A carriage containing a man and a daughter was attacked by him a few days ago. He is said to have bounded at the father, catching him in a grip like that of a vice, hurling him to the earth, falling on him, and endeavoring to bite and scratch him like a wild animal. The struggle was long and fearful, rolling and wallowing in deep mud, have suffocated, sometimes beneath his adversary, whose burning and maniac eyes glared into his own with murderous and savage intensity. Just as he was about to become exhausted from his exertions, his daughter, Taking courage at the imminent danger of her parents, snatched up a rock and hurling it at the head of her father's would-be murderer, was fortunate enough to put an end to the struggle by striking him somewhere around the ear. The creature was not stunned, but feeling unequal to further exertion, slowly got up and retired into the neighboring copse that skirted the road. So, it does seem like quite the far-fetched story. I, I find it hard to believe that this... Bigfoot creature, this Ohio grass man, was, you know, fended off by a lady throwing a rock at its head. And not like a, an adult lady, but a, a young, probably like a teenager. Doesn't really say how uh, old the daughter was, but I'm assuming probably in her teens, picking up a rock and throwing it at the, the creature. So that seems 
very far-fetched to me that that would be the thing to thwart off a creature that's like on top of a, a man you know scratching at him and trying to bite him like but anyways yeah it, it made the creature run off into the nearby woods and uh, disappeared and that was that i haven't been able to find you know any other newspaper articles um that apparently did write about this encounter uh, i read online that you know multiple newspapers reported it but there's only one article i could actually find so there's no other way to back this story up but as far as like violent bigfoot encounters go in the 1800s you do hear of a lot of stories like this there was the one in oklahoma the human bigfoot war in oklahoma in uh, i think it was lafleur county where you know these uh, bigfoot creatures were taking people and um ripping them up and you know probably eating them <laughs> it was a pretty violent uh story but um these bigfoot creatures were confronted by a group of you know rather large first nations people and uh there was a battle that went on um they were trying to find the missing people and um the trail led them to this area where these bigfoot creatures basically um you know were consuming them and killing them and if you read the story it's pretty violent and grotesque um way back in the day like in the 1800s and even back to like the 1700s is when you know things were changing and people strange people were coming from you know england into the into the united states and into canada and it was just it probably seemed quite threatening to any bigfoot creatures that were around and it was certainly threatening to the indigenous people who also were encountering these creatures for you know as long as they could remember um but you know you have these strange people showing up with their you know strange clothes and their wagons and they're building houses and it's just unusual and it was probably threatening in a way to uh, these bigfoot creatures and you know and they were more violent because of that and uh, they didn't know what to make of them but i bet they soon found out that people you know were quite dangerous in their own way and very threatening as well and uh, they decided you know to uh, back off and and remain more uh, hidden and elusive and uh, you know maybe that's why we don't hear of these violent encounters anymore because they know that people can be violent this is all speculation don't forget um, I have no idea why these could all just be made up stories as well these crazy Bigfoot attack stories there's also the classic Bowman encounter the two trappers you know they were out trapping beaver and uh, one of them lost his head essentially extremely violent Bigfoot encounter um, it is strange though that all over the country back in the day people were writing with Bigfoot encounters I, you know maybe they were even more prevalent than they are today a lot of land was unexplored and as people explored that land and mapped out the country I'm sure they had you know a substantial amount of Bigfoot encounters um, and you know the methods of sharing encounters and news getting around was a lot more primitive than it is today so i bet you there was a lot of stuff that happened that just went undocumented anyways i want to know what you guys think about this down in the comments below do you think this is a genuine encounter do you think it's just a story or i find it kind of hard to believe just because you know of the daughter throwing a rock at its head and having it take off like that I feel like this is a creature that in that moment is just full of rage and like angry and upset. I don't think it would even bat an eye having a little rock thrown at its head. But you know, that's just what I think. And that's what I make of the story based on the information available. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you next time on Mountain Beast Mysteries.